Hey, what's up guys? Andy here, and today we're reviewing over My Hero Academia, episode 87, titled Japanese Hero Billboard Chart. Now, I actually got a little bit of sleep before I woke up to do this review, so it might be a few minutes late, but, uh... This was a great episode, okay? Some people can sit there and say, oh, they were just filling time in and stuff like that up until the end. No, this episode was world building. This is what I love to see in anime. This is why I love... Well, One Piece does really good world building, but like it's more about how the characters affect the world. But in this way, this was like showing us the system. Like, this was showing us our base system for how things work. And now that All Might's not number one anymore, this is how it's going to work. So, I mean, I, I was super pumped. Um, We got a lot of cool stuff in the beginning. We got a lot of cool stuff in the middle. We got our top ten ranked heroes. So, we got to see all, ten, our, all of our top ten. And we also got to see a very cool interaction between the number one and number two hero. And a crazy finish. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this review. We have no time to waste. If y'all do enjoy this video, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And let's jump right into it. So we start things off with the announcement that November is coming to an end and Eerie can't stay in the hospital forever, so they're going to be taking care of her at UA because her parents abandoned her and her only blood relative that they know of is the head of the Shai Hasuke organization and he's still in a coma. So she has nowhere to go right now and basically they're just kind of like, what are we going to do with her? So they're keeping her there at UA and the teachers are going to watch over her. Along with Mirio, and Mirio will be a great dad. But they basically tell, you know, Class 1A, y'all can't stick around, y'all got visitors coming soon, y'all need to get back to your dorm and get ready for that. And at that point I was thinking, oh, what could it be, you know? And that actually turned into something cool anyway, but we'll talk about that, because we get our intro and title card here, Japanese Hero Billboard Chart. And we cut back in, and it's none other than the Pussycats. And this was really fun. They basically just paid a visit to let everyone know, hey, you know, we're back in business. You know, we're all good now. And they kind of question Ragdoll. They're like, you're back working? And she's like, no, I'm going to be doing office stuff. And that's when Koda and Deku have this cute little moment. And basically, he's still just like, you know, trying to play it cool. But he got red shoes just like Deku. And it was a feels-good moment. But we cut back to the ragdoll situation because they got news from headquarters that basically... All for one said, yeah, I'll, I'll give her quirk back. I just love getting my hands on all sorts of quirks. You all just got to let me use my quirk to give it back to her. And it was really cool to see, but that's all we got there. And we cut into this, and we find out that this billboard chart is based on the total of number of in incidents resolved, along with the contribution to society and citizen approval rating. So this will be the first time they're doing an actual appearance with the top 10. And we kind of just get to go through and see everybody. Some of these heroes I've never seen before. And some of them I'm just kind of like, eh. But we got the Dragoon hero, Ryuki, Ryuku. We know her. And the equipped hero, Yoro, Yoro Yi Murashashi. I don't know how to say these names. And number 8, the clean and shiny commercial laundry hero, Wash, which was crazy. But then we got Kamui Woods, and he seems really cool. I always liked his character design from when we first seen him in the beginning, but then we got the shield hero, <coughs> Crust, not Naofumi, the rabbit hero, Mirko, who comes off as a complete and utter asshat, but we get ninja hero, Edshot. I really like this character. He might be my second favorite hero. Uh, we got the third ranked best genus. He was overall best ranked in citizen approval, but he is currently on hiatus from his injuries. And we got Wing Hero Hawks at number two, who has become my favorite hero with just this episode. We'll get into that. But we then cut into our number one hero, and you could have guessed it, the Flame Hero Endeavor. And basically, everybody's just giving a little speech here, and Edge Stop... Uh, Edshot basically says, I don't want fame, I do it for peace. And Hawks looks at him in front of this whole crowd of huge people. He goes, oh, 
Who are you trying to please with that statement, Stain? And then he gets up and just starts ripping into it. He's like, we've got to make a change for this society. And he's like, he just starts going off and he's really just setting All Might, or not All Might, he's setting Endeavor up to kind of build into All Might's shoes. And, you know, Endeavor just says here, you all don't think I can do it, just watch me. Watch me. Like, he's motivated. I love this part of Endeavor. But we then cut into them talking after this is over, and Endeavor's like, you little bat, like, why did you do this? Like, he's like, oh, I was just trying to hype you up, man, but I actually wanted to talk to you about teaming up. There's been some troubling eyewitness accounts of Nomus in my hometown. And we cut over to a scene of Dobby going in, and he goes, the last ones didn't really understand, but I have high hopes for the high ends. We'll get back to that. We cut into Hawks and Endeavor walking to a local food shop to talk this uh, team up over. And we basically find out he's got a huge fan base and he's really good with his fans. And that's why he was pretty much overall number two, I think, in citizen approval. But then he stops, t he starts telling Endeavor and he's like, it's all just rumors. But I want you to become a leader and investigate this and then tell everyone proudly to stop worrying. And he tells him, he's like, I'm not a hero that wants to bring peace and stuff. I just want to be laid back, you know. I want to have a peaceful, you know. He, he wants peace, but he wants to do it in a laid back way to where, like, the villains, I guess, are too scared to do anything. But then we get our end scene. Out of nowhere, a Nomu busts through the glass and Endeavor's like, well, I guess it's just my perfect timing then. I, either way, this is what I came to deal with. I guess they weren't just rumors after all. And Hawk seems really f su suspicious on this part. But, like, I don't think that they would just throw it that quick into our face, you know. But, uh, yeah, Endeavor is fighting this high-end Nomu. And hopefully this will be a great fight for next week. But this episode was just great in general. Just world building. Like, letting us know who our top ten heroes are. Letting us know how this system works. Letting us into the eyes of, like, a citizen of the world, you know? And it was really cool. But I think Hawks is my favorite hero now. I don't think he had anything to do with this attack. Because if he did, it would be a little too giving it. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be too much in there. But if you're a manga reader, don't let me know. I want to find out for myself. And with that being said, guys, I'll catch you all next time. Peace out. This is our identity.